and Night Owl here. Welcome back to my hookah. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Please make sure to hit that thumbs up button and the subscribe button and the bell icon, bell icon next to it. You'll never miss another one of my videos. As you can see, I do stutter a little bit, so just, you know, bear with me. Um, if you have a sticker and you have a YouTube channel, please make sure to contact me on Instagram and, or Twitter, which are in the description below. You can get that to me by messaging me I will give you my address and you can send me one of your stickers and it'll go up on the Hoot Crew Hall of Fame now also don't forget the giveaway is happening at the end of this month which is next week um, and we are supporting the Inquisitive Moments channel which I will leave the description to her channel down below make sure you go there make sure you subscribe to her hit her bell and make sure that you leave the comment hashtag love from the night owl and you will be entered to win we will be doing a run, random comment picker. I'll probably do that on the next Wednesday during one of my live quizzes so that we can do um, so that we can do the giveaway. And you don't have to be there, but just make sure that within 24 hours you contact me uh, via comment or on Instagram and Twitter and let me know that you've seen the video. I will do the, the uh, comment picker at the very beginning. So hope to see you there. Today we are getting back into the Boundaries book. I haven't read it for quite some time. Uh, like I said before, it's been a chaotic summer, so we're just going to get back into it. And we are starting in the section where it says resources and gifts. So if you've seen, I have a playlist dedicated to this book. So if you have not seen the first 10 that I've uploaded or so, please make sure that you go back and watch them and you will kind of understand where we're at right now. So... I'm just going to turn this camera a little bit here. Alrighty, here we go. So it says, contrast these two responses from the master who entrusted a portion of his wealth to three servants. And this scripture is from Matthew 25, verses 23, and then 26 to 28. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I, put, I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. You wicked lazy servant, so you knew that I harvest where I have not sown. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not gathered scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned I would receive it back with interest. So take the this uh, take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. No other passage better illustrates God's ordained responsibility to, for ownership and stewardship of resources. Although the example is of money, it also applies to internal talents and gifts. Our talents are clearly within our boundaries and are our, and are our responsibility. Yet taking ownership of them often is frightening and always risky. This parable says that we are to hold ourselves accountable not to mention much happier when we are exercising our gifts and being productive so basically like if you're being productive during your day and you're using your gifts for whatever your gift may be whether it be to uh in lift uplift someone to read to children to help a kid with his math homework that's your gift and when you help someone and you know you've helped them that uplifts you that makes you happier so um uh where was i sorry it takes work practice learning prayer and grace to overcome the fear of failure that the wicked and lazy servants gave into he has not he was not chastised for being afraid we are all afraid when trying something new and difficult we, he was chastised for not confronting his fear and trying the best he could. Not confronting our fear denies the grace of God and insults both his giving of the gift and his grace to sustain us as we are learning. So if we have a gift for, say, singing or for preaching or for anything, and we're not using that gift and we're sitting on our butts just going, yeah, whatever, let the day go by, we're not being productive and we're insulting God for everything that he's given us, you know? Okay, so the next part is called thoughts. 
Our mind and thoughts are important reflections of the image of God. No other creature on earth has our thinking ability. We are the only creatures who are called to love God with all our minds. And that is in Mark chapter 12, verse 30. And Paul wrote that he was taking captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ, which is in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Establishing boundaries in thinking involves three things. So here's those three things. We must own our own thoughts. So you know how people are like, own it, take responsibility for your thoughts, take responsibility. So it says, many people have not taken ownership of their own thinking process. They are mechanically thinking that the thoughts of others without ever examining them, they swallow others' opinions and reasonings, ever, never questioning and thinking about their thinking. So if we think one way and then we hear a bunch of people talking, nine times out of ten we're just going to go with the flow and go, okay, well, whatever, let's just do it. You know, and that's what he's saying. If you think something different, speak up. Like sometimes, yes, we have to compromise. I get that. But, you know, um, never questioning or thinking about their thinking. So certainly we should listen to the thoughts of others and weigh them. But we should never give our minds over to anyone. We are to weigh things for ourselves in the context of relationship sharpening each other as iron sharpens iron but remaining separate thinkers so even though sometimes we have to compromise and everything else when it comes to certain activities that we do with friends and stuff like that never let them take your mind and start thinking the way they're thinking if you think for yourself it, you'll be so much better off so here's the second one we must grow in knowledge and expand our minds so one area in which we need to grow is in knowledge of God and his word. So David said of knowing God's word, My soul is consumed with longing for your laws at all times. Your statutes are my delight. They are my counselors. Which is in Psalms 119 verses 20 and then verse 24. We also learn much about God by studying his creation and his work. In learning about his world, we obey the commandment to rule over the earth and all that is within it. So we learn to rule, but we also learn to respect it. Because if we don't respect it, look at what's happened to the world today. It's falling, falling apart. As my dad sometimes says, it's going to hell in a handbasket. You know, just put it in the basket. There it goes. See you later. You know, it's kind of... Whatever, but um, we must learn about the world that has given uh, that has given us to become wise stewards. Whether we are doing brain surgery, balancing our checkbook, or raising our children, we are to use our brains to have better lives and glorify God. Now, the one thing I always tell my kids, like the crowd may be going, let's do this, let's do this. And I said to him, if in your head you're hearing maybe that's not right maybe that's not for me listen to that little voice in your head yeah sometimes you're gonna get backlash for it you're gonna get teased for it whatever but at least in the long run you'll know for you you made the right decision so here's the third one we must clarify distorted thinking we all have a tendency not to see things clearly to think and perceive in distorted ways Probably the easiest distortions to notice are in personal relationships. We rarely see people as they really are. Our perceptions are distorted by past relationships and our own perceptions of who we think they are. Even the people we know best, we do not see clearly because of the logs in our eye, which Matthew 7 verses 3 to 5 says you know take a look at the log in your eye before you look at the speck in your brother's eye so now it says taking ownership of our thinking in relationships requires being active and checking out where we may be going wrong as we assimilate new information our thinking adapts and grows closer to reality also we need to make sure that we are communicating our thoughts to others Many people think that others should be able to read our minds and know what they want. 
and we never do like my kids are always like really mom and I'm like no really I don't understand I failed psychic 101 okay and my dad actually came up with that one so that's another one of his little isms he comes up with so this leads to frustration even Paul says for who knows a person's thoughts except their own except their own spirit within them which is in 1 Corinthians verse chapter 2 verse 11 what a great statement that boundaries about boundaries we have our own thoughts and we and if we want others to know them we must tell them so i'm going to leave it there there's next week will be desires and love but i'm going to leave you with a couple of questions now i know that i left you with um, cause I've been doing the workbook at the same time, you know, thinking of you guys while I'm doing this. Okay. So here's the ones for this week. Now resources and gifts. It says here in the workbook. Now these you can get at your local Christian bookstore. And if they don't have it, ask them if they can order it in for you. Or if they have a website that you can possibly order it off of, or they know of one that you can get these workbooks. Cause doing the book and doing the workbook in the, at the same time is definitely a benefit. So this is what it says. Although it uses money as an example, which is in Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 30, clearly illustrates our God-ordained responsibility for ownership and stewardship of our resources, talents, and gifts. Our talents are within our boundaries and our responsibility. You take ownership of them, it, you taking ownership of them is often frightening and always risky. It takes work, practice, learning, prayer, resources, and grace to overcome the fear of failure. That can keep us from exercising our talents, but we are accountable and much happier. We, when we exercise our God-given gifts and are productive. So don't let anybody tell you what to do in the sense of, don't let them tell you how to think. Oh, you should be doing this. You should be doing that. You should think this and you should... You are different from them. You think differently from them. So God has a different plan for you than he has for them. So you need to work with that. So here's the three questions I'm going to leave you with. What talents, gifts, and abilities has God given you? So sit down and pray about it. Ask God to help you with that if you, if you need it. Or you can ask your brother, a sister, your parents, a friend from church. If you're not sure, ask someone who knows you well enough to help you identify them. Now, the second question is this. What talents, gifts, and abilities are you currently exercising and how do you feel about what you are doing? And here's the last one. What talents, gifts, or abilities are you afraid to exercise? What is the root of these fears and what steps will you take to overcome those fears? Now. I know a lot of fears, a lot of people, the first thing that pops into your mind, especially when you first become a Christian and stuff like that, is what are people going to think of me? What are they going to say about me? What are they going to do? So all I have to say about that is I've heard it all. I've been called a Bible thumper, uh, Jesus freak, everything else. And I've also been told myself, oh, you go to church on a Saturday? I go to church whatever day that I want to. I'm there for the fellowship, I'm there for the Bible study, I'm there for the, the friendship of my others to be lifted and encouraged to go back out into the world and tell people more about Christ. That's, that's why I go to church. And if it's on a Saturday, it's probably for a special event and everything else. And so what if it's for Bible study? That's where I'm meant to be. So that's where I will be. Anyways, I'm going to leave you with that. And I hope this helps. Next week, we'll do uh, the next couple ones. And hopefully, I can keep getting back on this. And then we're going to get on to another book um, that I already talked to you about, I think, before. But I'll remind you of it next week. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I really hope it helped. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And make sure you share this out. Love y'all. God bless. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,